it's Bo. I am here to do the There a Ten But book tag, which was started by Kieran at Katie Books, and this is a fun tag to talk mostly about books that you've already read. I wasn't tagged in this tag, but I thought it was fun, so let's get started. Question number one is, they're a 10, but they're over 500 pages. Now, as we all know, I didn't have a lot to choose from for this because I haven't read that many books over 500 pages because I don't really like books over 500 pages. But for this answer, I'm going to go with Dune by Frank Herbert. I read this book in 2020 and it was the first time I had ever read it which is kind of surprising because I love sci-fi and I love vintage sci-fi. My father had read this book, my husband had read this book, and I was so pleasantly surprised by how awesome this book was. It's a lot about the political machinations of these people who are coming together. It definitely has problematic elements like white saviorism and colonization, but I think that overall it's it's just a really interesting world and interesting concepts and ideas for a sci-fi book. If you haven't read Dune or seen any of the film adaptations, this follows Paul Atreides who goes to the planet called Dune with his father, but unfortunately tragedy strikes quite early in their taking over of the planet's spice mining. Spice is a very precious substance that's mined on Dune and what makes Dune or Arrakis such a important planet in the political overview of this universe. They are deceded from the leadership of Dune very quickly and Paul and his mother have to make their way across this desert planet that they really don't know anything about and try to survive. That is the majority of the book, but there is all this behind the scenes with all the players that are involved in the politics of this universe, why Spice is important, all the different people involved in the Atreides betrayal, and so much more. It's a really fascinating story, and for a book that is usually 700 to 800 pages, it moves surprisingly quickly. There's so many characters and so much to remember and so much going on, but especially reading this on audio read by Simon Vance, it was just a pleasure to get through. Question number two is, they're a 10, but they're on pre-order. So I've only ever pre-ordered one book in my entire life, so I don't really have a lead out on what's on pre-order and what's not. I don't really think of new releases in that way. I don't really think of things far off in the future in that way when it comes to books. I'm much more of a backlist booktuber and backlist reader, but I will change this question to be, they're a 10, but they're going to be hard to find in a little free library. And that I'm going to give to Sundial by Katriana Ward. Now this is one of my most anticipated 2022 releases, one of the few books that I have heard of or know about that's coming out in 2022. It already did come out earlier this year, but it's a little bit niche because it is kind of psychological horror slash culty slash a writer that not too many people probably know about. And I can't imagine a lot of people picking up this book and then dropping it off in a little free library or used bookstore in my area. You never know, and that's why I love used bookstores. But I'm going to say that this is my most anticipated read that I haven't found yet. So they're a 10, but they're going to be hard to find. Number three is they're a 10, but they're a red flag. And this is going to be a pretty obvious one, but I'm going to go with Lolita. Now, Lolita sprung up quite recently again in my life. I haven't read this disturbing book by Vladimir Novikov in quite a few years, but I have read it several times in my life, and I've really, really enjoyed it. I find the writing to be self-deprecating, but also self-aggrandizing. The character is so delusional, but also kind of realistic. There's a lot of, like, dichotomies going on here, but obviously they're a red flag because this is about child abuse and 
and statutory rape and sex with minors, and it's very, very disturbing. Although I enjoyed this book, I've read it several times, it's hard not to cringe at this book. It is definitely a problematic book. Like I said, this has been cropping up in my life again recently. A friend recently tried to read it, and he couldn't get all the way through it, but I've also found some more interesting information about Nobokov. I've never read any other books by Nobokov, but I do have one other book which is a memoir of his, so I think I'm going to read that one first and then reread Lolita at some point in the next three to six months. Prop number four is they're 10, but they're over 100 years old. And for this one, I'm going to go with Dracula. I recently reread Dracula in December of 2021, and I just forgot how much fun it is and how it is definitely an inception place for all vampire myths, but also well-deserved of all the vampire hype. There's a reason that all vampires refer back to Dracula and that Dracula is such an incredibly popular character and story, even though it's a very old book. This is such a fun epistolary novel. It has silliness and humor, and it has some tension and thrilling moments, and it's just a great one to read if you haven't read it and you like vampires. Prop number five is they're a 10, but they were studied in school. For this one, I'm going to go with all of Shakespeare, but both specifically Romeo and Juliet and A Midsummer's Night Dream. I strangely don't have a copy of A Midsummer's Night Dream, which is bizarre because it is my favorite Shakespeare play, and I only have this terrible copy of Romeo and Juliet, so I definitely need to find some good vintage copies of these plays, and I think that these books are definitely a 10 because they have so much humor and poignancy, and they're just so interesting to read. They are, of course, incredibly short, even for plays. They're most well known for being difficult to read, but I think if you are a reader, they become easier and easier to read, and I think that they get bogged down with being taught in school and with being this like hard thing that you have to figure out. But if you're used to reading multiple different things, I don't think Shakespeare's that hard to grasp. You don't have to get every single word, especially when they're things that are out of date, but you can definitely pick up on what's going on. And of course, there's so many adaptations that you can also watch or listen to, which make them super fun. And then the final prompt is, they're a 10, but they'll cause you emotional damage. This is a sad one to end on, I feel like, but I'm going to go with The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. This was the first Gloria Naylor that I read, and it definitely solidified, in my mind, the Black American woman writing legacy that is Gloria Naylor, Toni Morrison, Alice Walker, and Nell Larson, so many other amazing women American writers. And this one is such a great book about women forming community and keeping community and the emotional work that women have to do and the physical work that women have to do. The work that women have to do at being frontrunners and forerunners for rights, for political movements, for care, for just everything. And I think it's a really interesting book. It's almost a book of interconnected short stories where you get multiple different stories of different women living at Brewster Place, but they're all connected in some way and they all do come back to each other. So could you read this as short stories? Yes. But is it a full novel? Also yes. The emotional damage part comes in with this book having one of the most graphic and disturbing gang rape scenes I've ever read, seen, heard about. It's horrific. And ever since I've read this book in January or February, it's literally given me nightmares. So although I love this book, I can't heartily recommend it to people because it is such a graphic depiction. Be warned, but know that this is a great book. Maybe it's not for everyone to read. Maybe some of Gloria Naylor's other books, which I haven't read yet, might be a better place to start. This is definitely a 10, but has scarred me for life. And that was the there a 10, but book tag. What questions do you think on there are not ones that apply to you? Like the way the pre-order one doesn't apply to me. What question would you put on there a 10, 
but let me know in the comments below. Some people have done this tag, some people haven't. I haven't seen Just the Book Freak do this tag, so I will tag her. I haven't seen Kevy do this tag, so I will tag her. I haven't seen Rosie do this tag that I know of, so I will tag Rosie Cockshut. So I will tag those people, but feel free to tag yourself and let me know your answers in the comments below or post a video and share it with us here. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye!